Why should they be excited about anything? Think about some nine-year-old, ten-year-old, when they leave the house, it's abandoned buildings everywhere. When they leave the house, you have uh, crackheads and people hanging on the corner. They turn on the TV, you got women shaking and twisting, they got guys talking about bling, bling, bling. Where's the successful role model for that nine-year-old so that they can have the hope and the belief that they can make it? Where is success anywhere around this young person? So for that reason alone, it's on us to make sure that the dollars are rotating so that these business owners can be profitable, so that they can hire more people, reducing the unemployment rate. Do you know when a person is unemployed, it impacts they hold daily patterns of behavior. If I don't have to get up in the morning, why go to sleep early? You know, so I can stay up all day and night, all right? If I don't have to get up early in the morning, I don't have a structure or anything to do, I can get involved in mischief. I can plot and plan on breaking in your home when you go to work. And we see that happening way too often. So, I mean, the list goes on. What I'm asking everyone to do is to, uh, and, and it's not a racial thing, I'm friends with every other ethnic group <laughs> out there. Majority of them respect my, my uh, candidate, you know, just being candid about the issues that we face. And I'm all about being accountable to what we should be doing as Americans and, and just as human beings in general. And if you can take your money and give it to people who you know don't care about you, that speaks volumes about you as an individual. And I understand it might be harder doing business with our community, but some sacrifices must be made. If not, what do we look forward to? What would that nine-year-old look forward to? Let's switch gears and talk about the rapes in our community. And we just had a 12-year-old girl, I'm not implying that she was uh, raped, uh, that was found in our district on 64th Street uh, in Marshfield. And this happened a week ago. Um, she was, I believe, strangled and beaten to death. Uh, she was missing, classified as a runaway, allegedly, and so on and so forth. But let's talk about these young ladies out here who, number one, no father's in their life. No positive male is in their life. So where would they get the values of what it's like to be treated like a queen? What it's like to be treated as a, as, as a woman? Where would they get that from? If there's no positive man in their life, where would that come from? And so to all the people who are talking about our young people, we have to ask ourselves, what have we done as adults, as older people, to help pave the way so that they can see success? All our people that moved to the suburbs, and my mom being one, she got out of Chicago. She, we have a lot of people living in Exodus. <laughs> but what is your commitment to giving back to where you came from? And block by block, we've been working on that type of structure so that it's, it's made simple, easy, and convenient for you so that it's not stressful. It's not requiring too much from you. Once a month, we're saying. So out of 30 days, one day, can you commit that day to uh, wherever you came from? And we have it organized by zip codes. Once again, this is what I do for no pay, for free, because I'm committed to changing our neighborhoods. And going back to the political side, this is why you need people such as myself who are so committed to the people who have ideas and innovative thoughts on how we can turn this thing around. Uh, it pains me um, that the 34th Ward Alderman, uh, Kerry Austin, was on CNN when Mr. Albert, Darian Albert, was beat to death. She was on CNN. Don Lemon from CNN asked her, what can be done about the violence in Chicago? I was in, um, I was in New York. No, I was in San Diego at the time. But I was watching the news because they had a Chicago special on. And my stomach started hurting when he pressed her on what can be done to stop the violence, and she couldn't answer. She couldn't answer. And the answers that she did, uh, that she gave, was uh, so cliche -ish, if that's a word. But it was such a cliche that we need to come together. What does that mean, my people? What does that mean, come together? Does that mean everyone physically in one area? Then what? You know, uh, she said we had to, uh, get more police. What is more police gonna do for our community? Do we put police on every block in our community where that solve the problems? No. So it pains me when you got people who make a nice salary, who are in leadership position, but don't even know what the solution is. Now I'm gonna tell you <laughs> what I would have loved for her to say. Number one, 
the, the, the issues we're dealing with in our neighborhood, uh, you can classify them as being acts of evil. And how do you combat acts of evil? You combat it by doing the opposite of evil. How many acts of love is taking place, block by block, throughout our neighborhood? Well, who should be doing that? Everyone. All right, let's put together a plan of action where we go go where the so-called most dangerous, evilest, evil block, whatever it is, and let's go and do acts of love there. Let's work with the people on them blocks to help them do acts of love. But more, more strategic than that, let's go block by block and identify every single person on the block. Let's find out what it is that God gave them to do. For some of you, that's going to be journalism. For some of you, technology. Some of you, business, science. Um, um, in the construction, working with their hands. Let's find out what everyone has a passion to do. Let's sort them by that passion and let's link them then to professionals who's doing it. It pains me when I go to a meeting and I see 500 people there and I know we don't have 500 different career clubs set up from them 500 people. So they're going to go home to the block where they came from with no structure, no direction, and, and nobody in their life. I tell people when I see guys on the corner, I immediately start to organize them in these different clubs to divide and then we can conquer and get them to uh, change their direction and become more successful. So um, please, whatever you do, I am still running despite the fact that you won't see my name on the ballot. I am going to be a write-in candidate. Cyron M. Smith, that's S-Y-R-O-N-M, initial. Smith, S-M-I-T-H, right in candidate for the 32nd district. The, the uh, alternative to me is the incumbent, Andre Tepetti, who has been in office and has not been uh, in our community block by block. The people when we went door to door getting our signatures, they didn't even know who their state representative was. And, and, and for that, we do have to ask our voters to become more aware of who you're paying your salaries to. Uh, the, the other thing I want to just real briefly mention, um, there's a process, and the process is very corrupt, and the process is this. Party leaders, people who know how to work the system, can take your individual signature when you nominate, when you sign to nominate someone for any position, they can take your single signature and file more than four different charges against your one signature. So for instance, for Alderman, you need maybe 200, 300 signatures to be on the ballot, just to have your name on the ballot so that the people have a choice to vote for you or not. But that one signature of yours, anyone can challenge and say that number one, you didn't sign. Forgery is what they're saying in essence. Number two, they're saying you're not registered at that address, even though you might be registered at that address. Number three, they saying that you live uh, outside the district, and that could very well be the case. And then the other one they could say is that it's just a pattern of fraud, so throw out the whole sheet. Uh, the problem with this process that they have right now is anyone can do it. And if anyone can do it, uh, all it takes is your competitor to put three or four of his people who believe in him or her in, in that process so that now you're going to spend a lot of time in court defending the very signatures that you went out and earned and that's what happened to me and uh, with us turning in over 1180 signatures according to them uh, I did not have 500 valid signatures and <laughs> you're talking about somebody who lives out there block by block so that's pretty hard to believe and uh, we, we're going to make sure we're raising awareness and that's why we're doing this video so people can Number one, find out that this is happening behind the scenes. So when you go to the booth to vote and you think you're making your choice, no, no, no. You're making a choice with what's left. You're making a choice with what uh, remains after the people, the insiders, the people who know how to work the system have already selected who they want uh, to appear on that ballot. So what we have to do as voters, as average everyday voters, we have to ask the question to the people who's running. Do you believe and allowing me to make the choices, meaning you're not going to try and remove anyone off the ballot. Do you believe in giving me the say-so and the power to say yay or nay to who I want, or are you going to take that power away and try and remove candidates? 